Hi ladies, it's Kiara reporting on Tuesday, May 8th, and it is six days past my IUI procedure. And I gotta tell you ladies, the, the last couple of days have been off the hook shit tea. Um, I have been an emotional wreck. I've been very irritable. I have been like a hawk, like watching for any signs of pregnancy and, and you know, when I, when I feel like I, I don't have a sign of pregnancy, I'm freak out and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to be a mother one day. And it, freaking freaks me out and it scares me. It scares me and it's just, it's crazy. And today, Jason and I, we had an appointment with a heart surgeon um, for Jason because as I mentioned before, Jason suffers from Marfan syndrome. And basically we met with the heart surgeon this morning and it was basically saying, next summer, Jason will have to have open heart surgery. Young, healthy man having to have open heart surgery because of suffering from Marfan syndrome. Awesome. So it has been a really tough day. And... I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you ladies a bit about Marfan syndrome and how that has affected our journey with family planning and part one, part one of our TTC journey and then part two will be about me finding out about endometriosis or me knowing, or me finding out that I had stage four endometriosis. Jason was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome back in September of 2010. Now, for those of you ladies who don't know what Marfan syndrome is, I'm just going to read the definition of um, what the National Marfan Foundation has defined Marfan syndrome as. So my laptop is just on my lap right now, so I'm just going to be looking down, reading to you ladies the definition. So Marfan syndrome is a disorder of the connective tissue. Connective tissue holds all parts of the body together and helps control how the body grows. Because connective tissue is found throughout the body, Marfan syndrome features can occur in many parts of the body. Marfan syndrome features are most often found in the heart, blood vessels, bones, joints, and eyes. Sometimes the lungs and skin are also affected. Marfan syndrome does not affect intelligence. About one in 5,000 people have Marfan syndrome. This includes men and women of all races and all ethnic groups. So Marfan syndrome is a rare genetic disorder. And for Jason, a lot of the disease has manifested in his heart. So the reason why we met with the heart surgeon today is because there are some complications with his heart that will basically, um, in order to kind of fix and repair his heart, will entail um, open heart surgery. And that is scheduled for next summer, so probably July of 2013. Um, what I'm going to do is um, Jason's actually reached out to the Canadian Marfan Foundation, um, or sorry, the Canadian Marfan Association, telling the association his story and how he was, how he found out that he had the disease and how it, it has affected his life. So I'm not going to go too much into how he found out about it and how that has affected, you know, his body and his health and stuff, because I'm going to post his story 
on the description below, so please check it out. But I am going to talk about the effect that it has on our family planning. So I just want to stress that um, prior to September 2010, Jason and I, we were, you know, we would have been dating for eight years at that point. And, you know, obviously we had talked about having a family and, you know, being together for eight years, I just knew that I wanted to have or, or share life with the love of my life. And that day when we were, you know, we were at a genetics office or we were, we sat down before a genetic doctor and Jason had to do a series of tests to confirm that he actually had sup or he had the Marfan gene in him. And that day, I will never forget the genetic counselor counseling Jason and I, telling us that Jason um, had a 50% chance of passing that disease to his offspring. So basically how it works is upon conception or upon conceiving, once the egg meets the sperm and that magic happens and I get pregnant, there's a 50% chance that our baby could have this disease. And I really urge you ladies, or no, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I recommend that if you ladies want to know more about Marfan syndrome, it's a pretty serious disease. And that was really hard. Not only was it hard for Jason to come to terms with having this disease, because he grew up normal childhood, very, very healthy, and then poof, found out that he was having all these complications going on in his heart. That was hard enough for him as it, as it is. But then to be counseled by a geneticist saying, hey, Jason, you've got this disease, but guess what? You've got a 50% chance of passing it down to your child. And I'm not talking 5% or 0.2. This is a 50% chance. So black or white, yes or no, of it passing it down to your offspring. And that crushed us. That was our first journey of being struck with the challenges of trying to plan a family. Now, I'm also going to note that at this point, ladies, I didn't even know I had cyst growing on my ovaries. Jason was diagnosed in September of 2010. It wasn't until that December that I'd end up in a hospital complaining of severe abdominal cramping, which I'll get to in part two. So at this point, we were being genetically, or we were being counseled about, you know, Jason passing down this gene. And we were, we were just so, we were traumatized. We were like, oh my God, we don't want our offspring to have this horrible disease. And, you know, yeah, it, it, you know, even though, you know, there are, you know, it, it, for Jason, it manifested all in his heart, but there are some really strong physical characteristics of the disease that, like, it's, it's really heartbreaking to see these young children have to go through that. And, and we were, we were just really shocked when we were actually doing research about the disease. And at first, Jason and I were like, you know what, no, like, this what what are we going to do like so we were actually our geneticists gave us some options of how we can actually deal with this new challenge and basically she said that there are several ways to kind of go about this and we were told that if i got pregnant there are several tests that i can do when the baby's inside my belly to test if it had Marfan syndrome or not. And basically those test results would show if, if it had Marfan's and we 
had we could have the option to terminate the pregnancy if we felt like we didn't want to have a baby with Marfan syndrome. And that was really hard um, because, you know, sorry, first cry in the vlog, but um, like, you know, we, it's just crazy, you know, you, we thought we were healthy, and again, like, this is not even me knowing I have endometriosis, so it was hard for us to hear that, you know, when we do decide to get pregnant, we have to now think in the back of our head that this baby could have Marfan syndrome, and I'm really sorry, I'm just going to charge my phone.